Last day we will talk about the fixed effect regression assumptions. So basically, they will follow the multiple regression assumptions. First, the expected value of the error term with respect to x and the fixed effect term will be equal to zero. The third one is large outliers are unlikely, and finally, no perfect multicollinearities. And what is special is that the second assumptions, x i one, x i two, up to x i t, and u i t and UI2 plus and UI3 and all the UIT are IID. That means that, okay, the ent entity I at time period 1 and 2 and 3 are independent. So this is special because in multiple regression, we assume that various entry are independent. But here we do not. We assume that for the same entry, at different time, they are uncorrelated. So if this assumption is violated, say if different time are correlated, so we call this the model is suffer from the auto correlation problem, or I call it serial correlation, series of serial correlated. So it means that maybe the time period t minus 1 and time period t are correlated so we we should not allow this case to happen but this always happened because for the b attacks in our examples so the b attacks of this year and last year may be correlated and for the error terms say the income level may be correlated with last year so sometimes they this happens the second assumption is violate easily so what is the consequence? The consequence that is that if the assumption D is valid, that we cannot use the hectoral scedasticity robust standard error. So in multiple regressions, no no matter the variance are homoscedastic or hectoral scedasticity. We can always use this to solve the heteroscedasticity problem, but in the panel data, if they are odd, if they are serially correlated, we cannot use heteroscedastic robust standard error to solve the problems. So this is similar to the multiple regressions. If the variance are not constant, you cannot use the homoscedasticity only standard error. So what you what should you use? So we call this. heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation consistence standard error so in short HAC standard error so we should use a new standard error to compute the estimations otherwise they will suffer from inconsistent problems so next I will derive the HAC standard error. So this, the following proof are quite advanced. So it is okay if you cannot understand what I am deriving. So this is quite out of scope of the basic UG course. Okay, but let's go through it quickly. So beta one hat in panel data is is equal to the sub something like okay covariance between the x i and y i t x i t and y i t so x i t tilted here is the x i t minus the average of x i with respect to time so y i t is the similar concept so the covariance between x and y derived by the variance of x so this is more or less derived from the OLS results and in panel data we still have these properties covariance divided by the variance so this is equal to beta 1 plus 1 derived by n t so here we have two average n and t here okay so the average is something like this 
beta 1 plus the covariance between x and u and the variance of the x so again this is something related to the basic OLS so okay so by the central limit theorem you know that the variance times this square root of n so in the past just the n okay so you times the square root of n then this form will be standardized distributions but in panel data we, we also have t so you need to derive times the square root of n times t okay so beta 1 hat is equal to this minus beta 1 only this second term remains this second terms minus the square root of n t so this is this will become uh, 1 over n the whole term square root sum of i equal to 1 to n and 1 of t take the square root sum of t equal to 1 to t x i t tilde u i t tilde derived by the denominator is just the same okay so why I take out the n here because usually the n is greater than time so it is so because time you need one year two years three years but for the n there may be uh, millions days right millions people so usually n is greater it is for the tradition that we take out the n at the at the left hand side and we mainly focus on here okay so here let's use a term to represent it called eta i eta i to represent the these terms so and in, for the denominator let's call this q x to square okay so by the central limit theorem we know that the this term will go to standardize the normal distribution so by clt we know that n t times beta 1 hat minus beta 1 will go to n of 0 and the variance of the eta derived by the variance of the denominator okay so if you forgot the CLT go back to the previous videos and you will take a look of the simple reg multiple regression case then you will know what I'm doing or maybe you will have a better feeling what I'm doing okay so this is the uh, you know that by COT this goes to this variance so how to estimate this variance so let's continue okay So we got that the variance of beta one hat, okay, is just one derived by the number of entity times time, times the variance of eta, derived by the q x tilde square. Therefore, the standard error of the beta one hat would be one derived by n t, then. How we estimate the variance? So how yeah, how we estimate the variance of eta? You use the sample standard deviation of eta and square it. So the sample variance of eta derived by q x tilde square. So here the the standard sample standard deviation of an eta is just one divided by n minus one times the sum from i equal to one to n the eta i square well it should minus the bar the average of eta i but what is the eta i bar average this is the average of x i times u i the covariance term in OLS we assume this is equal to zero so we can ignore the minus zero here so this is how we estimate the 
stand, sample standard deviation of an eater. Okay. So this is so after you plug in the value of SX, you can compute the standard error of beta one hat. So this is what we call the HAC standard error.